Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Certainly grateful today for all of the visitors that are with us this morning, for our signing team, and for the members. Amen. Amen. I'm glad myself. I can't speak for everybody, but I sure can speak for me. I'm grateful for being able to have some folks to preach to this morning. I don't want anyone to walk away with the wrong impression. I preach to me sometimes. But it's not as enjoyable when I preach to just me as when I preach to other folks. Amen. I'm certainly also grateful to the Lord for feeling much better in my body than struggling. Amen. It's it's a terrible thing when you're trying to breathe and can't get no air. Amen. That's, amen. It's given me a whole different perspective. Amen. I've been teasing with Deacon Curtis, telling him I'm going to come out to his house and get some of his oxygen. <laughs> and don't you know that he was generous enough to offer me some? <laughs> amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Psalms. And while you're doing that, let me just say that I'm, I love to see all the young folks in the church. Amen. They're going different places, and much to the aggravation of older saints, I let them do a whole lot of stuff. <coughs> and they'll come and fuss. Why are you letting them do that? Because they're young people. Amen. I want to sit at home. I don't mind sitting at home. But it hasn't been so long that I don't remember wanting to rip and run to all the councils and all the different meetings and things. And Amen. I just ain't got it in me no more. It's not that I don't have the strength. I just don't have the willpower. I'm not interested in all that. I got everything at home that I want and need. Yeah. Amen. Got the internet. Got my wife. And I got my wife. So, brothers, are y'all taking notes? Okay. Open your Bibles to the book of Psalms number 122. This is a psalm that we quote a lot during testimony service. But I think sometimes we just kind of get stuck in the words but really don't consider what it means. Psalm number 122. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. I just would like to speak this morning from the subject, I was glad. I just want to let everyone know that I understand that this passage of scripture, this psalm itself, is directed to Israel as a nation, to Jerusalem as a place of worship, to the location where the judgment or judgments of God take place. And all too often we feel like the word judgment means something bad. 
but it doesn't. Even when you go to court, there's two people that are in dispute. When the judge hands down his or her judgment, one might walk away sad, but the other walks away happy. So not all judgment is a bad thing. There are times when we may feel in ourselves that there is something wrong, and we come and have if I can say it this way, we come and get judgment and find out that there's nothing wrong with it and we can walk away glad. If we were to change some of the words here and apply it to the church and use Jerusalem, the church instead of Jerusalem and the people instead of tribes, I think it would sound a little more specific to how I'm applying it today. And the word wither means just to the place. So if I could read a few of these again, maybe four. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O church. The church is builded as a city. It is compact together. To the place the people go up, the people of the Lord unto the testimony of his people to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. The church is the place where we can come and as the scripture says compact that means we are gathered in together tightly. Maybe not tightly as in the church is so full there's no room but tightly in our purpose in serving God. Tightly knit together with one mind that our devotion and our service is to the one true God. Yes, you can sit at home and praise the Lord. I don't want to make it sound like you can't praise God in your private time. But there's something about when the people of the Lord get together. In psychology, there is a term that they use called the hive mind, where a group of people get together and it almost sets them in a frenzy. We see this at sporting events when a team loses. Oftentimes, there are riots after the game. People set cars on fire, turn them over. You see them out rocking buses and vans, trying to tip them over. And when I've seen them interview people that were a part of it later, and they say, I don't know what I was thinking. That's not like me. I don't do things like that. But they became a part of what is called a hive mind. The group was set on violence and destruction and they got swept away with the rest of the crowd. The same thing happens when we come to church. We should be able to come to church with it in our mind to serve the Lord. With it in our mind to come and get something from God. To hear the testimonies of God's people. If I could say it this way, when you come to church and everybody's excited, it gets you excited too. You just kind of fall right into place. And so I don't believe in cheerleading people into being happy, but I believe we should be happy when we come to church. David said, I was glad when they told me, let's go to church. I was happy when they said, this is an opportunity to go and serve the Lord. Sometimes we're glad once we get here, but we're not so happy when we're at home getting dressed, thinking about all the different things that we've got to do, our TV shows that we're going to be missing, the opportunity to run to the beach, and we in the wintertime now maybe go skiing or sledding those kind of things and 
and, or we want to go out to dinner and spend time with our companion, that kind of thing. And so I'm not so happy about going to church. But we have got to learn to change that mindset. We have got to learn to be happy and glad when it's time to come and serve the Lord. I know, I, I, I don't want to, to give this idea that you should get up in the morning and just have, oh, it's time to go to church. I'm not saying that. It, there's something about going where we should be expecting to receive something. I used to work a lot of hours, and I was expectant for a paycheck at the end of that time. And I can remember there were times when I would work overtime, a lot of overtime, and I would be excited to find out what my check was going to look like on Friday. Now, I'll be honest. I wasn't smart enough to figure out how many hours was going to get me how much money, minus how much in taxes, what my bottom line was going to be. I wasn't smart enough to figure that out, so I was just anxious to find out what my paycheck was going to look like. Hey, Amen. Get home and... And, uh, honey, come look at this. Open up the envelope and peel it back a little bit. Just take a look at that. I was excited. We got some extra money. But man, and thinking just like poor folks, we got extra money. Let's go find some place where we can spend it. Hey, Amen. It ought to be like that when it comes time to come to church. I'm expecting something exciting. I'm expecting something from the Lord. I've been going through some things during the week, and I know that when I get to church, I'm going to hear something that's going to get me stirred up right. and excited yeah. about being saved. Yeah. Something stirred up and excited about my walk with God, something that's going to give me some encouragement about the problems that I've been going through. When I come to church, that's what you should be praying about. Lord, let the preacher get up and say something that's going to speak to my situation. Man, if you're never getting anything from the message, maybe you need to start praying and asking God to give you something from the message. Don't come to church with your jaws all swollen up mad that you got to be here and then get here and sit with an attitude because they sing it all off key. <clears throat> Musicians is happy right now. Don't come to church mad because they singing the same old songs over and over again. Amen. Don't do that. Come looking for something from God. Amen. You ought to have an expectation about coming to church and getting something from God. I mean, if I can say it this way, and I'm not trying to tell you how to talk to God, but you ought to talk to him and tell him, I need something today. If I don't get it in the songs, let me get it in the prayer. Right. If I don't get it in the prayer, let me get it in the praise. Right. If I can't get it in the praise, let me get it in your word. But Lord, I need something from you. We ought to come in with it on our lips. I'm glad to be here today. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be in his service. I'm glad to be expecting something from God. I'm glad that I'm someplace where I can be in the presence of the Lord. I know a lot of times in music they kind of get this crazy notion that you can sing yourself into the presence of the Lord. That's not being in the presence of the Lord. You can't stay at home and pray and come into the presence of the Lord. That's not the presence of the Lord either. The Bible tells us where the presence of the Lord is. He said that in the book of Genesis. And Adam hid himself from the presence of the Lord. 
When was he hiding? When I heard the voice of God speaking in the garden. When you come to church and God is talking to you. That's the presence of the Lord. I ought to be glad that I'm coming into the presence of the Lord. I can say it this way. If we use the Bible as our perfect example, when the people hid themselves from God, when the people weren't happy about being in the presence of the Lord, it's because they had a problem in their life. It wasn't because of God. It was because I'm hiding from God. That's why you see folks, when they all excited for the Lord, they're sitting up on the front pew. They all, they just happy. Standing up, clapping their hands and excited. Testimony service starts and they the first one to jump up. I just had to say something about the Lord. When service starts, they're standing outside waiting for somebody to come and unlock the door for them. They just happy. Come in, run up to the altar. Get down and pray for the, before the service starts. As you can see, after a while, they're kind of sitting in the middle of the church. Amen. Every now and then you'll see them wave their hand and say amen, but not too much after that. And then pretty soon you see them tiptoe in after service starts and sit in the back row. Amen. Y'all think, y'all think I don't pay attention. I see. A lot of times our actions speak so loud. You don't have to come in and not say hallelujah. I'm just watching where you're sitting. And I can see you used to be up on the front row, excited for Jesus. And now you're tiptoeing in the back. And as soon as I say, in Jesus' name, amen, the back doors is doing this. Because you done hurried up and got out, don't want to talk to nobody. Amen. Then got the nerve to tell me later, well... I'm just tired of folks meddling in my business. That's not what it is. That's just an excuse. You just don't want to hear what the Lord has to say. You don't want nobody telling you, hey, how you doing? Because then you have to explain some things. Amen. So the best thing to do is just avoid folks. All right, I'll leave it alone. But I can tell you, you can tell with somebody glad to be in church. Because they come here excited. They're praising the Lord with folks, grinning and waving. How you doing? Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Come on in. Wow. You know, it just seemed like we saw each other three days ago. Amen. Well, yeah, we did. We was in Bible class. Didn't I just see you yesterday at prayer? You know, we're just happy about being in church. Amen. If you want to get something from God, you're going to have to start getting glad about being around God. He said, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. This is the reason why we come to church. This is the reason why we ought to be glad when we come to church. Because when we get here, we're seeking the good of the Lord. We're seeking the good things that God has for us in our life. It's not always money. Sometimes it's just encouragement. All right. I just, I just want you to know that there are some things that's worth more than money. Now, you might not realize that when you're young, but as you get older, you start to realize there's some things that's more valuable than money. Somebody asked me one time about my job. Why are you still working there? You can make so much more money if you just went somewhere else. I said, because when I need to go, I can go. When I need to be late, I can be late. When I need to run in the middle of the day, I can run in the middle of the day. I don't have to give an answer. I don't have somebody standing over my shoulder. The boss knows that when he gives me a task to do, I'm going to get it done. So I can come and go as I please, and he doesn't worry about all of that. That's worth more than a raise on my job. So there's some things that make me happy that money can't buy. One of the things that make me happy is when I can lay down in bed at night and not be laying there with all kind of condemnation in my life. When I can lay down and go to sleep because I know today I have done everything I could to serve God. 
When I know that I haven't been tiptoeing around whispering and winking at women other than my wife. Amen. And I just want y'all to know, sometimes I do tiptoe around and wink at my wife. Amen. Sometimes I just walk by and rub her shoulder. Just want her to know I'm still interested in you. I do that. I'm not doing that to somebody else's wife. I'm not looking for somebody else. I'm grateful for what I got so I can lay in the bed next to my wife at night, not saying I hope she ain't trying to find out who I've been texting. Hope she's not talking to so-and-so because they might drop a dime on me and let her know I've been winking at other women. I'm so glad that I can lay down at night and not talk and not lay there worrying about. I wonder if somebody saw me walking away from the drug dealer's house. Wonder if somebody saw me walking out of the drugstore thinking I might have bought some liquor. I I don't have to lay in bed and worry about that kind of stuff. There's some things worth more than money. Amen. This is a humble church. We don't have a whole lot. But I'm glad that I'm here. I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I got truth. I'm so glad that I got peace of mind in this place. I'm glad when they say unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I've come expecting something from the Lord. And just because I preach don't mean that I'm not getting something. There's times when I'm preaching and I'll say things that come to my mind that I didn't even think about. And it'll hit me. And I'll say, ooh, I'm guilty of that, Lord. But I know I got to go out and say it because God gave it to me. What I got to do, I got to repent and start working on me. Then there's times when I say something and I realize I spoke to a situation in my own life. Didn't even realize what I was doing. So I get something too from the preacher. Man, we got ministers here. I get stuff from when they preach. Man, somebody just just preached not too long ago. I got two messages from him. Amen. I'm listening. Some folks want to go, oh, not them. That's not my attitude. My attitude is what you got for me. And I'm not listening how you preach. I'm listening about what you preach. Are you telling me something? Are you preaching to me? Am I receiving something? That's what I want. I want to get something from God when I come. I don't come here looking to pick apart everything. (coughs) Amen. Man, like Bishop Tyson used to say, amen, somebody. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you mad. <clears throat> amen. And that's the truth, isn't it? Sometimes the truth step on our toes. Sometimes the truth will get us a little bit. And we walk home a little upset because the word found us. But you go on and take that word and apply it to your life. Go home and lick your wounds a little bit and then get glad to come on back to church again. Don't sit around pouting and brooding and I'm not going back there no more. If he going to preach on whiskey, I'm not going back there again. If he going to preach on shacking up with women, I ain't going there no more. No, leave the women alone and get right with God. Come on back to church. This is the place where we come to hear from heaven. And Lord, I need to hear from you. Amen. Sometimes you're just glad and want to come to church and get stirred up some more. Ain't ain't nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you're down and out and you need to come to church to get some encouragement. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Come looking to get something from God. And I can guarantee you that if you expect, you'll receive. If you come asking, you'll get. If you come searching, you'll find it. Man, you come looking to pick, and you'll find that too. You come looking for problems, you'll find it easily. Amen. I know. I, look, I, I know I'm not perfect. My wife could find a lot of things wrong with me if she wanted to look hard enough. I'm just glad she ain't looking. All right, I'm through. I'm through with my wife. I'm gonna leave her. See, if I, if I use somebody else in, as, a, as an example, I know after church, oh, Pastor, can I talk to you? 
uh, that kind of got me upset when you said. So I tell them, me and my wife, that way when I go home, I know ain't going to be no fighting and fussing. And I know how far to go with her. I'm not going to get up and tell her personal business. Amen. I know how far to go. And so preachers, don't get up and tell your business. Well, a pastor doesn't know. I know how far to go. Amen. And if you ain't sure, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Amen. Don't go home and tear up your house. Don't come here and tear it up. And then, go, and then when your wife don't want to come back to church the next time you preach, that's on you. All right. Amen. Be glad. And if you're not glad, get glad. If you can't get glad, come looking to get glad. Keep on until you do get glad. David said, I was glad. I had to change that. I said, no, I am glad to come to the house of the Lord. I'm glad when I know I'm going to get something from God. If you have to re rehearse that to yourself, on the way coming, when you're getting dressed, I'm glad I'm going to church. Keep on saying it till you feel it. Keep on saying it till it's down in your heart. Hey man, you, you ain't lying. Don't worry about, Pastor, I was lying. I said, I'm glad to come to church. Keep on saying it to yourself till you feel it. Hey man, I know folks that lie to their self so much they start to believe their own lie. Hey man, well, convince yourself. I'm glad to hear from God. And pretty soon you will be. I'm glad, I'm glad. Come on, let's get to church, y'all. Don't come strolling in late. Don't come walking up in the back to look at me, who's here? <laughs> I've, I've seen saints do that. I've, I, I, I used to work in the sound room, which was just off the sanctuary, and have folk knock on the door, open up, who's going to be preaching tonight? So-and-so, oh, I, I'm going home. I don't want to hear them. You don't want to hear from the Lord. I rebuked them too. I told them, I said, you're wrong. That's a wrong spirit altogether. You ought to come trying to receive something from God. I wasn't even a pastor. I was just working in the sound room. That's all. I said, shame on you. You ought to come receiving, looking to receive something from God. Why do you care who it is? Well, they get on my nerves. I said, that, but so what? They're going to tell you what thus saith the Lord. So what if they got a little something that gets on your nerves when they talk? Overlook it and listen for something from God. It's all in how you look at the things. That's all. Amen. I'm through. I'm going to leave it alone. All right. Let us stand. If anyone wants to be saved, come see me after church. Amen. All right. I don't want nobody saying, uh, Pastor, you forgot the altar call today. No, I didn't forget. Folks know how to get me. I've baptized more people after church on a day on a non-church day than I have at church so folks know how to get you when they want you amen if it's bothering you you know how to get in touch with me I'm available all right let us look to the Lord and dismiss him let the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength my redeemer in Jesus name amen